Simu Lu is big mad because his height of fame has been a Phase 4 MCU movie. And we know what Phase 4 MCU is like. So because of that, you know, instead of trying to broaden, you know, his roles or maybe he just can't. And maybe he's just mad about that. I don't know. But he is attacking the legendary Quentin Tarantino saying he's, oh, guess what? Guess what he called him? It's 2022. Guess what? Uh, racist. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like the rest of us, apparently, according to woke people. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into today's video, which reeks of some jealousy or just some frustration. Because I don't know, I haven't seen him do anything else. Maybe he has. Maybe he's working on it. But all I know is Shang-Chi, while I did want to watch it, it just didn't captivate me enough to actually go watch it. I still haven't seen it. I heard it was okay and suffered by some. Some said it was great. I don't know. I might give it a shot one of these days. But uh, today has not been that day or any day up until now. Which I also saw this tweet on my timeline as well earlier from Steven Crowder replying to... Because he, Simu Liu actually made a tweet here, all right? This wasn't just some interview. He actually made a tweet here. All right, so first let's address this. He goes, if the only gatekeepers to movie stardom came from Tarantino and Scorsese, I would never have had the opportunity to lead a $400 million plus movie. <laughs> I am in awe of their filmmaking genius. They are transcendent auteurs, but they don't get to point their nose at me or anyone. Okay, uh, no movie studio is or ever will be perfect, but I'm proud to work with one that has made sustained efforts to improve diversity on screen by creating heroes that empower and inspire people of all communities, blah, 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 same old woke speak we keep seeing everywhere. Just this ridiculous idea that, you know, movies don't hire diverse actors, that only MCU is doing this. Only Disney is hiring people who aren't white. <laughs> you know, let's just forget about, I don't know, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. You know, it's only in the, in the 2020s or the 2015s onward. It's only Marvel and Disney, right? No. It, to me, this this just screams of he had five minutes of fame and he just will not let it go and he will use every opportunity to try to dig back up that five minutes of fame and just to do mention the only thing he's ever done to kind of humble brag about it. Pretend like he's just doing an activist thing when really it's like, huh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Not enough people are looking at me. So anyway, Steven Crowder says here, you do realize that this is the same Tarantino responsible for repeatedly casting black actors like Sam Jackson and Pam Greer and that Kill Bill was a love letter to Asian cinema casting many Asian actors you ungrateful self-important prick <laughs> um, very eloquently stated uh, also Kill Bill is such a classic just one of my all-time faves loved that shout out for Kill Bill but yes come on my guy come on Get real. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this article here from Bounding Into Comics regarding the whole story where uh, Spencer here says not one to let an opportunity embarrass himself <laughs> pass to embarrass himself pass him by. <laughs> Shang-Chi and the legend of the Ten Ring star Simu Liu has dismissed the criticisms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe by a veritably esteemed Hollywood directors Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese as nothing more than racist gatekeeping. This is getting really old. It's like, did Disney just get together with all of anybody they've ever hired and, that, and say, hey, guys, well, I, I need you to tweet something about how everybody except us are racist and everybody who criticizes anything we do are racist or sexist or whatever because we know the whole She-Hulk stuff, too. Is this a collaborated effort? Are they getting paid for this? <laughs> I really don't think that's the case. I think they're just trying to stay relevant. This is, okay, I'm just going to be completely straightforward in what this says to me. 
I don't know if Simu Liu is getting more roles. I don't know if he's doing big things. Maybe he is. But I'm just saying, just as someone who's observing from the sidelines here, what it looks like to me is, first of all, he was incredibly lucky to even get this role at all. Didn't he get it just because he tweeted at Marvel and said, hey, I want to do this? But did he actually have the credentials? Did he actually have, you know, the portfolio to land a big role like this? No. Uh, not to my knowledge, he got really lucky to even have this opportunity in the first place because, you know, they could have found somebody else in Hollywood who could have done it and probably has a lot more experience and talent. But I digress. Uh, what this reads to me is he got this lucky opportunity of a lifetime, okay? Took it, and he's not getting other opportunities of this scale anymore and because of that he's salty about it right and so in this case instead of just I don't know thinking how can I improve myself as an actor to try to get these bigger roles or maybe have some sort of self ex ex uh, uh, awareness in the fact that oh maybe I'm not you know the Brad Pitt of this generation where I'm just going to get a ton of these roles. Uh, but I'm very grateful that I got the one I did. You know, it's not nothing to that. It, it, it reads to me like, not getting any more roles? And because I'm not getting any more big roles, I'm going to call everybody racist because I deserve to be in a Tarantino movie. Because I deserve to be in a Scorsese movie. Okay? All right, let's continue. <laughs> As many may already know, whether through listening to the director himself uh, or the unhinged ranting of those who are unable to fathom the idea that Thor Love and Thunder is not high art, Scorsese is far from the biggest fan of the MCU. Speaking to the topic during an interview with Empire Magazine via IndieWire in 2019, the Wolf of Wall Street director explained, I don't see them. I tried, you know, but that's not cinema. Honestly, I respect his opinion here, even though I do love comic book-based movies. I loved the MCU up until Phase 4, uh, anything before Endgame, for the most part, with some exceptions of, you know, a little bit of not as great material, but, uh, most of what they've made, I just absolutely adored it. DC, even. I'm a big DC fangirl, so I actually like a lot of DCU stuff, even. Surprisingly, I know. Uh, even though I can, but I can objectively take a step back and say, hey, you know, this is not the same cinema, this is not the same art as something like Shutter Island or <laughs> Kill Bill or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just not in that caliber. It's popcorn movie fun uh, and really cool to see, but it isn't uh, at the same artistic caliber as other movies uh, can be. So I think this is a fair opinion, uh, even though I obviously enjoy said movies up until... They got just absolutely obliterated with woke washing. So, okay, let's continue. Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well-made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under these circumstances, is theme parks. I remember this interview. He opined, It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. I think that's a fair take, even though, again, I love said movies. Uh, expanding on his opinion in an op-ed for the New York Times, Scorsese opined, Many of the elements that define cinema as I know it are there in Marvel Pictures. What's not there is revelation, mystery, or genuine emotional danger. I will say, however, Infinity War is the exception to this. Infinity War, man, it was so freaking good. And the way that they did... Thanos in Infinity War was just brilliant. The way that it ended was brilliant because it just didn't make you... It wasn't your typical, predictable Marvel-type movie. It was different in that sense. It was a lot deeper than what we typically see. Also, don't even get me started on Joker. That movie's a masterpiece. So I will say that Joker's also an ex exception to this rule because Joker is pure art. 
That movie is just wow. All right, so nothing is at risk, he said. The pictures are made to satisfy a specific set of demands, and they are designed as variations of a finite number of themes. They are sequels in name, but they are remakes in spirit, and everything in them is officially sanctioned because it can't really be any other way. That's the nature of modern fil film franchises, the director asserted. Market researched, audience tested, vetted, modified, revetted, and remodified until they're ready for consumption. Fair, again, fair. I will say this isn't always a bad thing because not everything we consume has to be a cinematic masterpiece. I'm thinking in all entertainment forms in general too, like comic book forms or comic books, video games, that kind of stuff. They don't all have to be these just gripping, thought-provoking pieces of entertainment. Sometimes entertainment is fun when it isn't, when it, you know, isn't necessarily trying to pick your brain the entire time. That's okay. Uh, so this criticism is fair, but it's also okay that, that Marvel movies don't have to be these things. Uh, let's look at, Okay, I'm doing it again. I'm talking about Tomb Raider. I'm sorry, but look at Tomb Raider. I am obsessed with it. Does Tomb Raider, and when think about classic Tomb Raider, is it all thought-provoking, and did it just shake my world? Did it turn my brain upside down? No, but I don't want it to do that. That's one of my biggest criticisms with, like, the rebooted Tomb Raider, for example, is they try to make all these overly dramatic stories, but they lack the talent to actually successfully pull that off so instead we're just getting these whiny Lara Croft this dramatic Lara Croft and but even if let's like even if let's say they were able to just get, deliver this dynamic incredible piece of art that just changed my world and made me rethink all of humanity right that's not what I want in Tomb Raider it's just not I don't want when I watch Tomb Raider movie or play a Tomb Raider video game I just want to see Lara Croft be this hyper uh feminine exaggerated curvy bombshell total like look up to her and daydream that I could be as cool as her one day which obviously would never happen uh that's what I want to see from Tomb Raider I want to see her kick butt I want to see those cliche campiness uh I want to see all that so his opinions here are valid but again that's not necessary for Marvel so I will say that much but it would be nice if Marvel could be good again <laughs> in terms of not woke washing everything they are putting out there right now. All right. So unsurprisingly, Scorsese's, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but this is on brand for me anyway now. So it is what it is, is not the only auteur director who has taken issue with a lack of creativity and disposable nature of the MCU. Asked by the Los Angeles Time during a November interview why he never chose to set foot in Marvel's ever devolving franchise, Tarantino asserted, you have to be a hired hand to do those things. I'm not a hired hand, he said. I'm not looking for a job. His comments sparking a wave of backlash from Marvel stands, Tarantino elaborated on his point during a later interview with Deadline. Marvel is a company, said the once upon a time in Hollywood director. They have properties. And when they hire a director, they're hiring a director to shepherd their property. I'm not looking for a job like that, and I'm not even eligible for a job like that. Fair? Raising concern about creators' rights, Tarantino told the entertainment news outlet, if it was going to work out for me, I would go to Marvel Comics. I would create a character. They would have no rights over the character other than to publish the book. And then when the book became successful, I would make a movie and they would have no rights over the movie other than the privilege of releasing it. Okay. Further expounding on his disdain for the MCU's active assault on creativity during a November 21st, <laughs> that was my birthday, appearance on comedian Tom Segura's Two Bears, One Cave podcast, Tarantino posited that part of the marvelization of Hollywood is that you have all these actors who have become famous playing these characters, but they're not movie stars. Also fair. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, this is, you know, so while I think that for Tarantino or Scorsese to get backlash on what they're saying here is unreasonable because these are valid points. However, on the other hand, it doesn't mean that 
what they're criticizing here it doesn't mean that movies who are that are more lighthearted and that are less deep are bad everybody has different tastes now i will say there are some amazing points they're saying here in the fact that every movie of sorts that comes out of marvel is like a reboot uh and, and even though they're supposed to all work together there's still way too many plot holes there's way too many conflicting things going on there and especially since phase four has been so obsessed with the multiverse they can just do whatever they want and then fix it in whatever the next movie is because they're like oh wait a minute that was the multiverse uh so this was just in a different parallel universe now but in this other universe you know this happened instead so it just makes it uh very vapid i guess you could say um so I will say that there are that I don't like that. Uh, I don't like this obsession with the multiverse. Just don't. Uh, I'm at the point now to where I would rather see the movies just stand alone on their own instead of focusing so much on how they connect together in the overarching MCU. Um, you know, it was, it was really fun at first, especially when you saw the different cameos and all that. It's like, whoa, cool. They're like all merged together. And it is fun to see that. But then I think what we really lost with that was a lot of the individuality of a lot of characters like speaking of look at spider-man here spider-man got completely ripped off by the overall overarching mcu uh, cinematic universe because spider-man didn't fit in to the overall mcu uh as his normal self would have been they had to kind of transform him in a way to make him fit with the group instead of letting him stand on his own this is why you constantly have seen him uh you know he's in tony stark's shadow for the most part he didn't really stand on his own and he wasn't really in personality that accurate to actual peter parker slash spider-man he lost a lot of his snarkiness a lot of his sarcasm uh all that we didn't see as much of that uh especially in the his own standalone movies we just saw the the good guy peter parker the good old boy and he had that side but it was that snarky sarcastic side that really made spider-man so fun and so not seeing as much of that and may and feeling like he's just you know not able to to really shine as much as he would if they just embraced more of who he was as a character instead of trying to just make him fit into a puzzle, then yeah, it would have been a lot better. But okay, let's go ahead and continue reading this. Uh, predictably, Tarantino's refusal to praise such moments as Yelena's disregard for the seriousness of the Red Room's force hysterectomies as the pinnacle of modern storytelling only led to more outrage among marvel diehards eventually taking note of the fervor lou seized on the chance to clout chase and took to his personal twitter on november 22nd to refute the director's criticisms by accusing them essentially of being nostalgic for racism okay so I already read his tweets before. I will not subject you to that again. The unbearably smug actor then turned to laughably praise Disney, the same company that in recent years alone have shrunk John Boyega's fin, fin on the Chinese posters for Star Wars the force awakens and ensures that the on-screen diversity they claim to champion can be easily cut for foreign markets as the shining paragon of inclusion and representation mm -hmm. yeah this is just a joke okay like i said earlier this just reads to me like he had his five minutes of fame he's not getting any more uh, of that caliber and he's big mad about it and he's big mad that by the time he did get to be a part of Marvel uh, of the MCU, it was after they've already run themselves to the ground with Phase 4, okay? Not to say that Shang-Chi is a bad movie. I, again, have not seen it, but I have heard it's actually good. I'll probably get around to watching it one of these days, but we'll see. Anyway, that's my opinions, but let me know yours in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.